Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. Again, no webcam. This time we're going over the tutorial for how to set up and use untap.in to play Dragon Ball Super online. Just want to give you guys the full view of the screen so you guys can see all the different things I'm pressing and clicking. Guys, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so never miss a video. All the links you guys are gonna need for everything I'm talking about in this video will be down in the description below. And if you guys wanna see my video for setting up Octagon, the downloadable version of this basically, where you can play Dragon Ball Super Online, I'll link that down there as well. I put that out yesterday. But this is untap.in. This is a browser-based engine where you can play Dragon Ball Super. Doesn't require any downloading. The one poor thing about this is that it has been running a bit buggy lately. And you'll actually see here that there aren't as many games as there normally are going here. And I think that's because in the in the past few weeks, this has been very, very overcrowded. So I think people are kind of taking a step back from Untap. But up to, Untap did put out an update yesterday. I haven't played any games with the update, so I just wanted to let you guys know about that. I'm assuming the update was there to fix some of the lagginess, some of the bugginess. But I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, that's my experience with this. And it is a really easy, good way to play the game. I personally prefer Octagon, so I do have the video for how to set that up. But with that being said, we're going to get into this untapped video. So this is untapped.in. The URL will be down in the description, but it's very, very simple. You can see it up here in the URL bar, untapped.in. You're going to want to go there. If you've never made an account before, it's going to ask you to make an account. I'm sure you guys know how to do that. So do that. Set up your account. Check your email. They'll probably send you a confirmation email. Then you have access to untapped.in. Once you create your account, it's also going to ask you what games you want to play. You'll notice up here that I have two tabs, one for all games, one for Dragon Ball Super. Once you check off Dragon Ball Super, that is going to be one of your game tabs, but you can always go back to all games and see what else everyone's playing. Obviously, you can see a lot of people play Magic on here. Some people play DBS. Some, some people play Pokemon. I really only play DBS, so I'm keeping the DBS tab the highlighted one. Now, a few things on this homepage here. You're always going to be on this games tab. Uh, the only ones I really use are decks and games. The only time you use the account tab is if you want to change your situation and subscribe to the untapped Patreon. Now, this is not like an ad or a paid thing or anything. I'm not getting paid to promote this. The only thing I will say is I think this is a great software for the community. So if you wanted to show your financial support, that'd be really helpful for them, I'm assuming. And if you do go with the $5 a month Patreon, you do get access to password protected games amongst other things. And I do that just so you know, when we're testing for a hardcore event, we want to keep things under wraps. So we do get that password protection just so you guys are aware of that. But anyways, this otherwise this is totally free to use. Now, back to this games page. So you see here on the right, there's DBS, but there's competitive, beginner, janky. When you start a game, you can set your setting, and I'll show you guys that. I will show you guys how to set up a game. I also want to bring your attention here to the right side of the screen for these spectate buttons. So these are all games that are currently going on. You'll see there are two users in each of these games. That means, you know, the players have opponents already. But when a new game pops up, which you might have seen already as you've been watching this video, you'll see a green button right there exactly perfect timing the join button so the join game button is when someone opens up a new tab or when you open up a new game someone will be able to join that game of course you can play online here with your friends if you don't have the password protection through the untapped patreon you kind of just have to time it up right with your friends make sure that they join and get in the lobby asap because once someone joins your game i don't believe you can kick them but you can always leave the game and start up a new one so that your friend can get in and you guys just make sure you recognize each other by your usernames Pretty simple. Now, here's like the interface of Untap. How are you gonna play the game? So first things first, you gotta import a deck. So you can use Untap's feature to import a deck. You can create a deck title. See, I have Dragon Ball Super highlighted here. Let's just type jank, create a deck, and you can search up card name by card name. And if you wanna do this this way, um, sometimes it's a little laggy and sometimes the image of the card will pop up over here where my mouse is floating. But unfortunately, doesn't always work that way. It's a little laggy here sometimes. So you can like drag the cards over to the side here. You know, your leader would start. That's not a leader card, but your leader would be here in the starts and play. Then you could bring your Broly's ring down to the main deck and you can do it that way. You can mess the ratios plus one, minus one. You guys kind of get the idea. You drag over and then you can set the ratios. But there is a way, way easier way to do this. I'm just going to go back. I'm going to delete this deck. And I'm going to show you a much easier way to get your decks over here onto Untap. So if you go over to Chevron's Lair, slightly shameless plug, but I do love the guys over here. They are basically my family. So I do want to shout them out, and it's a great resource. So if you haven't made an account on Chevron's Lair.com yet, make sure to go do that. Again, same idea. You guys have created tons of accounts for tons of things before. 
go check your email you might get a confirmation email then once you do that you come back here to sharemonzair.com again the link will be in the description but very simple up here in the url bar so you're gonna go to your account over here in the top right you're gonna go to my decks now if you've never created a deck before you're gonna go over here you're gonna press new deck and the deck builder is going to pop up amazing design here by the way so it's always gonna start you off with a leader card so you see here that leader is highlighted all the different leaders are popping up so let's say we're gonna play surge goku we would click on surge goku the page is gonna refresh you can name the deck whatever you want i'm going to get rid of all this and just name it jank we're gonna hit the save button because we're super cautious now we can highlight so many different things we can go by color here we can go by battle card leader card extra card we can go by energy cost there's even more filters where you can look at things like multicolor, skillless battle cards, tons and tons of really great search options. So now if we just add a few cards to the deck, the band Zeno button, the band legendary flute, the band minus Kelly zone, what a great deck of cards. We save it up. We go back to the viewer and this is the deck we've constructed so far. Now I want to redirect your attention up here. We have view, build, clone, screenshot, Octeon, which I showed you guys yesterday how to do PDF and untap. So if you are logged into an untap account and you're logging into Sharmon's Lair at the same time, you can very easily pair up your untap account and your Sharmon's Lair account just using this untap button right here. So if I click untap right now, you see it's saving deck save to untap. Perfect. You go back to untap. Now the deck is here, which is pretty cool. So all the stuff's here. Now we can start a game because we have our deck. One thing I want to notice sometimes the leader card will be uh, kind of messed up. So I'm not sure where that problem is on that end, but basically all you have to do is switch that out. So I'm going to drag my leader over here. I'm going to just switch the ratios of it to one and I'm making sure it's in the start and play column. That's very, very important. So I'm going to put this skillless Goku here to zero. I'm going to hit save deck. And now if I go back into the deck, my leader's there, my main deck is here, it's all well and good. So now, you guys want to start up a game, here we go. You're going to hit the new game button in the games tab that I just clicked into. New game, you can, set, you can set the title to whatever you want. Make sure it's something your friends can recognize or let them know what the title is going to be. You can set your play style, like I mentioned before. Beginner, janky, relaxed, optimized, competitive. Now, I would really just leave it at like relaxed or janky unless you're going like a some type of super competitive practicing because... Sometimes people on here can be a little annoying, but that's just the, the matter of the fact when you press competitive, they're not really going to be tolerant of like mistakes. So if you're a beginner, you're new to untap, I would definitely be very, very advising you to hit the beginner button. Of course, we're probably going to play two V twos. We're not really going to play threes or fours It's not commander and magic. Uh, I'm going to press solo just for the, um, introductory portion of this video. So I'm going to start my game. Now I've entered the game. Now you'll see there's a space right here underneath my username and that would be where your opponent would pop up, right? So with that being the case, we're just going to enter the game here. We're going to import the deck we just created. There's a leader card that will automatically pop up onto your board because you put it in the start and play column in the deck builder. So I just like to drag it over there a little bit. Now, most of the stuff you want to do to manipulate cards in this game is going to just require you to hover over the different cards so in terms of the deck right if we hover the hover over the deck which will be pretty much interacting with every single turn there is when you when you hover over it, there's a few options for buttons so we have this little hand signal which lets you basically take cards in and out of the deck you can draw multiple you can play cards you can play face down which in this game we don't really do you can send cards from top of your deck to the drop area right here top of your deck to your warp and you can set up your life points by pressing this number sign and then you could input eight right here where this pops up i'm not going to do that because it's only three cards in the deck so uh wouldn't be so great but i guess it automatically put one right there so uh this middle button just shuffles and i don't know all the hotkeys off the top of my head so you guys can definitely learn all the hotkeys like for example shuffle is the button v but i personally just click on it all then if we go to this three lines button a lot more options we can find cards so if you click if you click find cards that will let you use an effect that like searches the whole deck to look for, through your deck we can exit out of that then you can go like look at cards you can look at the top three and it'll let us look at top three cards i mean there's only two cards in the deck but you guys get the idea then you can shuffle up again and everything you do guys if you're brand new to this is also going to be recorded here in the game chat to the right which is pretty cool it shows that i've looked through my deck it shows that i've shuffled my deck and that's a cool way to know that your opponent is actually doing what their effects tell them to do uh that's a really good way to keep it keep track of things online if you can't play with friends you got to play with random other people just keeping it kind of uh honest there so anyways like i said most things you're gonna do you're gonna hover over your leader here 
uh there's not really much to do here with the hover over button the only one hover thing i do with the leader i'll go to this three lines bar and i'll press alt face and it'll awaken the leader i kind of wish it just said awaken but it doesn't say that for whatever reason so um alt face and default face those are the way to awaken and unawaken your leader now if you want to tap cards all you have to do double click on the card you double click on the card so once you do that you can tap a card you can type in chat what your attack target is there's also a shake button if you hover over one of the cards and find that option you can shake the card and that'll tell your opponent that's one of your attack targets is one of the good ways to do that on the bar to the left here we've got a lot of shortcuts we have insert card and tokens we have alert response if you need your opponent to pay attention you can do that we have no response if your opponent's like attacking you and you have no negates you can click on that it'll let them know you're not responding to what they're doing then we have the untap all button which is great if you're going you know back to your turn from your opponent's turn untap all and let you untap everything and then we have a dice roller so we have a d6 a d10 and a d20 that you can just click on and roll a die now i want to show you one more thing if i draw one card from the top of my deck which I, just, which I just did with that little draw one button i can drag this onto the field right so anything you play if you play a battle card if you play an extra card you can only just drag it onto the field right from your hand now if i wanted to charge this as an energy i would go to this pivot 90 degree button and i would invert it and i can drag it down to my bottom row now you'll notice here there is this little energy insignia that shows that it is an energy i can tap it and it'll tap for an energy and that's basically how you show that it is uh, an energy then if i draw this last card of my deck let's just assume it was a battle card let's assume it was a one drop i could just bring it onto the field i could tap minus killy zone and then i would play the card and leave it there then you can drag it down here to the bottom left of the drop area if it would leave for some reason or you can bring it to the warp if that is appropriate but this down here is a drop area this right here is the warp and when you're playing with an actual opponent this middle green bar right here there is a arrow sign that would pop up right here that would allow you to pass turn to your opponent this bar would turn red showing that it's your opponent's turn and when they're finished with their turn you can either type it in chat or you can press that arrow button to pass turn to your opponent so i think i pretty much hit everything on the head here i think this is a pretty straightforward introduction to untap if you guys have any questions about how any of this stuff works please do leave them in the comments below let me know you guys like this video by dropping a like on it drop a comment thank you guys so much for watching hope this helped you guys out i will see you all next time